Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Mitchell Does Things and welcome to a new project we're going to do alongside the building Merseyside one we got going on. This is going to be my Planet Coaster Let's Play. Well, we're going to be building a theme park together. I'm going to be taking your suggestions and uh, seeing how things go. Uh, they can be serious, they can be silly and I'll actually consider all of them to be fair. And uh, yeah, I'm a bit of a theme park geek, you might have gathered by now. And um, I've been wanting to do this for quite some time, I just not really had the bottle for it. But I've got a few good ideas on what I want to do for the park. Um, so first off, we're going to be doing um, well, a horror themed roller coaster. It's going to be an indoor and outdoor coaster, so it's going to have a dark ride portion. I'm going to have two outdoor sections. It's going to have multiple launches. I'm going to be honest, when I finish this, it, was, it has three launches. But I'm tempted to put a fourth one in and extend the layout a little bit, even though it's got quite a lengthy layout as it is. Um, so yeah, there's that. Bit of a spoiler there. But, as a general rule, I think it came out quite well. It's a bit of a geeky one, this. Um, I'm going to explain all the technical terms and that if you're not really into like the theme park side of it and you don't know all the ins and outs and how roller coasters and that work. Um, I'm a massive geek when it comes to stuff like this, so I actually found, find it all interesting in, in that aspect so um, I don't mind explaining it to you if you want to know a bit more about what's going on so uh, yeah <laughs> where to start um, just starting the show building the indoor portion it's gonna have a, a launch initially and it's just gonna shoot right out the station well not right out the station it's gonna stop and have like a little launch section outside and then go back inside if that makes sense so it goes in a small outdoor bit and then straight back indoors it's it's going to be a mix of pacing but the layout's going to have a bit of a different variety so the first half is going to be focused on like the inversion and a bit of air time the second half of it obviously is going to be a lot slower so because it's indoors and it's going to have um, more of a dark ride portion to it and then the third half, if you like, is going to be focusing on their time and quick time, and like transitions and what have you. So it's going to be a lot faster paced than the uh, last one. And the whole story I want to get from this is like you're escaping a curse type thing, you're escaping like a cursed mansion or like an asylum or something like along them lines. It's a very loose theme at the minute. I'm still working on it. Um, I'll be working on it a bit further in the next episode because I'm going to be honest, I'm thinking of changing the layout. Not on the first half or the second bit, like the indoor section, more so the outdoor bit, the last initial one, the faster paced one. Because I feel like it just goes too, not so much too slow, it feels like it ends too suddenly and it could have a lot more going for it. So I'm going to put a fourth launch in, well not so much a launch but still a fourth launch because it's still getting up to speed and that and because of it it's going to be like a fourth like elements probably not as quick as the last or the second to last launch but i'm um, still getting up to speed until the end and thinking the end and having a few inversions because it doesn't actually have any other inversions at the very end which is a bit of a shame because we've got an inversion as soon as you leave the um the first launch but the indoor section I quite like the layout of. You might see all the straight track and me putting block sections in. If you don't know what block section is, I'll explain it to you. Now it's actually quite interesting. On most modern day roller coasters, certain exceptions are due, granted. On roller coasters that only have one train and one train only, they can only operate run just the one train and no more. They don't have a block section or anything like that. A block section helps a roller coaster run multiple trains. So let's say you go to, I don't know, Alton Towers and you go on the Smiler, Nemesis, anything like that, they all run multiple trains. Not all the time, granted, sometimes I know Nemesis only runs one train. On a busy day, it does run two. But, like the Smiler, they can run up to five, I think, five or six. Correct me if I'm wrong if you work there. <laughs> I fucking doubt it. Um, but I believe it's about four or five trains you can run. I think I've seen five maximum on it. And what the block section actually helps the ride do is well, run multiple trains so you can get more people through. And that's what I plan on doing this one. 
getting most people, or getting loads of people through, have multiple block sections. I think I got it up to about fucking hell, about 12 block sections on this coaster alone. So yeah, quite a few, you could say. Uh, I didn't like the way this looked. I want this to be like a graveyard, man. so you launch out into like a graveyard, avoid a grip like a demon if you like. I've done no thieving yet, I've done a bit of light thieving just to test the waters a bit. Uh, this is going to be like the initial launch, well not the initial but like the second initial launch if you like, to warm you up until like the penultimate finale. Um, and this is the thing with these style coasters, they have pretty snappy like elements to them. And that's what I want to do here, like have snappy like elements to it. Not so much inversion wise, but like snappy banking and stuff like that. Um, I mentioned in the last Planet Coaster video, my favourite coaster is Tarrant, which is in Fantasia Land in Germany. And that is pretty well known for having really snappy inversions. Like properly snappy and really good airtime and that's what I want this to focus on a bit but also have a bit of inversions as well so a good variety so I think there's one in America called Maverick same style of rise as um, Talon but the inverts and before Talon as well and yeah I just think it's an interesting um, ride type to be honest because you can run multiple trains no problem at all um, extend the launch a bit because it struggles to get over that hill and uh, yeah I just love the geeky side of this man it's just fun it's just like you'll see me in a minute when I finish the layout watching all the trains go through and see like if I need to add any more block sections because I wanted to keep all them this is a thing in certain theme parks especially in the Disney ones they have a tendency to just let not so much let it go automatically if you like but as soon as you get a train in you literally send another one straight out just to keep the it's like a conveyor belt system if you like so you just fucking as soon as one comes in load it out load it out load it out just as quick as they can and it's just like a conveyor belt so the minute one train comes in load it send it out about a second later next one in same again and that's the thing, I find it, mem like, if you go to, like, a travel fair as well, you see it yourself, it's quite mesmerising. I've seen it myself on, um, Al uh, yeah, Olympia Lupin. They have about, I think at the most, they had about five trains. And it was just mesmerising to just watch. <laughs> I remember sitting in the, um, one of the, um, beer gardens they had. Well, not the beer gardens, but, like, one of the bars they had in, um, the Winter Wonderland there in Hyde Park. And I was just stood, I just sat there, just watching it with my mates, having a pint, and just watching like the way the Germans were just loading their own ride. I was like, "Fucking hell, <laughs> you'll never get that over here." <laughs> but you see what I mean here? Just seeing if I can send multiple trains around. And as you can see, the, there was one that was stopping there, and I didn't want that. I wanted to continue moving as a conveyor belt. Just moving this out a bit as well because it's a bit jagged. I'm not too keen on the way that airtime hill looks there after that corkscrew. I think that could do a bit of work. And again, it's just watching and seeing how it works. This is just testing it. You may think, bloody hell, how much, how many brake runs you want, how many block sections and that. But if you think about it logically. You're gonna get more people through with more trains and they're gonna be willing to pay more if you're getting it down quickly as well. So yeah, you think about that, it's like it makes a bit of sense. <laughs> I was like, I need another inversion. This element gives one pretty good hang time. It goes through about like eight mile an hour and it's like <laughs> it just crawls through it. You'll see that in the POV in a minute. And yeah, there's a POV and what? And I got the base I've got the basic outline of what the show building to be like, as you can see there, and it, it's, at the layout I think it's alright, you'll see in a minute. You'll see in a minute, it's just, I keep stopping on, on that second launch and I don't like that. I want it to just continue going, so I think that's why I'm well, that's why I want to get the fourth launch in, so we can just continue rocketing forward. 
So you see what I mean? The minute it goes into that block run and everything like that, it will just it will just fly through. So in my in my head, I have at least one train on the block section behind the station, even though there's a, about four of them, I think, if I remember correctly. Even though there's about four block sections behind the station, I have one sitting on the block section behind the train in the station, and then. As soon as one comes off the, first, the last launch, the other one that was on the block section would be able to just run forward. And it's, it's, it's just, <laughs> I don't know if that makes sense, but I want at least one in the station, one behind it, one in the fourth launch, and then one to just... And then when that one comes from the fourth launch, by the time it's got to the block section behind the one waiting for the station one waiting for the station would be able to just go forward because the other one would have left that's my theory I don't, that doesn't make sense but if you think about it and you research on these things it'll actually make perfect sense I think <laughs> I don't know anymore my heads fell off after my shift and work that's my excuse <laughs> ah, it's been a long day and it's only just getting started, it's only quarter past four, fuck me. <laughs> but yeah, as you'll see, it just stops on that block section before that launch, and I don't really want it to do that. I want it to just power forward, and then just fly in that station like that train did there. And yeah, it's... Just... I can't really explain how, so I'm going to do it, to be honest. That's... Like, I'll change the layouts off screen, I think, a little bit. Or if you want me to, I can do it on screen. I've not recorded the next video yet. I was just trying to slow it down on this section. So, pacing wise, by the time it gets to that launch, it would be able to just fly through. But no, I think that's why I'm going to have to do that fourth launch idea. I was trying to tell you with the um, block section idea there. But it just, it works, but I don't really like it. It looks ugly, and it, especially if the train just stops there. I'm not a fan. I'm not a fan. I'm not a fan of the way he does that. Just don't do that to the little shot. Um, I've got a few ideas what I want to do with this park. I want it to be a manor park. Well, not so much a manor park if that makes sense, but you know, I got on towers, you've got like a big lake in the middle, and you've got like the old mansion in the middle. I want to do something like that. I know I'm totally knocking off Alton Towers here, but it's going to be my own take on it. It's going to be better, and that's a fucking promise. Um, it's going to be cheaper, I'm only going to charge you um, 60 quid. <laughs> Mate, with Brexit you need it, I'm telling you now. Uh, just getting some of the outline done for the uh, show bill. And this is where I start toying with a bit of theme, and do you know like the Saw franchise, I get the... Um, they get the Saws, obviously. In the Saw franchise, and if you've been on Saw the Ride, you'll know what I mean. The uh, spinning Saw elements, I wanted to replicate that a little bit. Just as a theming element, I think it looks cool on that little drop there. Because it's, um, I'm trying to think of the name, it's like a booby trap one. And he dropped down, and I want to put them in. You'll see that in a sec. But the, instead of the Saws being stationary and static, they're just being there, they will actually drop down. And I wanted that to be the main thing with it. So I think I've done that well in the um, end product, well not the end product, but you know what I mean. Because there you go, you've got the stationary ones and then you've got the moving ones. I was like, ooh, they could work. So I was like, yeah, have them spread out along there, multiple ones, and then have a trigger. Ooh, we're on to a winner. Because if you look at it there, you got the little drop and then it dips under, so the minute it drip, like, dips under, them swords are coming at you. It's like in the EMS elements, I was like, yes, I like that. That is sexy. That is, oof. If you were on Tinder, I was right, right. And then I want to do a bit of sound effect work as well. You'll hear that in a minute on the POV. Yeah, man. And like I say, you can see on there, you can, instead of the pigeons, you can see the uh, blades coming down as the train dips under, and I like that. I like all the little things in this game, it's just amazing. Attention to the detail of this game is pretty fucking, pretty brilliant. 
and you know what I've checked and they don't actually like well the test tube or the test tubes the test dummies don't actually um, clip them blades so you know that it's completely safe health and safety of plastic promise okay Boris thanks sun's crying now <laughs> In general, I think the whole show building, show, I think the whole show building will look good once it's complete. At the minute, it's just a blank canvas that we need to finish. I intend on finishing that in the next video, if not the next, if not the one after that. Uh, just toying with a few colours, seeing what works. Because obviously, it's going to be a horror themed ride. It's going to be a bit of a darker colour. Like, I like this dark green colour we got going on on the trains. This bluish colour doesn't really work for me, but grey and black seems to work a treat. So, sticking with that. And then here you can see, just sorting this out here. Making it look all nice and zesty. Just to block it off a little bit so it doesn't look that obvious as you're diving under. So here we go, you dive under, put on a bit of a floor thing in. Getting a little bit, getting little bits of Bob's done for the show building. Like I say, nothing's really set in stone, but that looks sexy. Proper sexy, I tell you. Obviously, you've still got pigeons flying about doing your heading. And it's just a pain in the ass. Um, this is meant to be like a loosely. It's a mixture of two companies, this ride. I'd say it's more intimate than it is Math Rides. Because they both have the same sort of thing going on when it comes to these launch coasters. Although Intamins are a lot more intense, in my opinion. Intamins are a bit more snappier and they seem to be well, the better ride, in my opinion. Mac rides, don't get me wrong, they're good, but the launches are weak as fuck. Like, you can fall asleep on them, they're not boring. <laughs> but the actual layouts on the Mac ride ones are really good. But that's just my two pence on the whole situation, let me know in the comments. <clears throat> you could even argue it's a bit of a gear slower, but obviously with different trains. But I'd say more intimate and Mac more than um, anyone else. But anyway, I'm going to bring this commentary to an end. If you like this style of video, guys, remember to let me know in the comments below. Hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. And uh, that's about it for this one. Thanks for watching, guys. Enjoy the rest of the POV. And I'll see you all in the next video. Take care, look after yourself, and wash your hands.